Buenos días a todos. Vamos a continuar la presentación con el profesor doctor Teo. Eh, él va a hacer la intervención en inglés y yo voy a hacer la presentación en castellano. Eh, doctor Teo Haibers eh, es profesor en parte de clases de recuperación de información en la Universidad de Puente, en los Países Bajos, y es además eh, pues, socio de una empresa que trabaja en el ámbito de la recuperación de información que se llama TAESIS. Eh, también es miembro de la sociedad eh, holandesa de ciencia de la información y lo que a nosotros nos interesa realmente es que es una persona que tiene una mezcla de currículum académico y currículum empresarial muy interesante porque ahora nos va a venir a hablar acerca de la recuperación de información en la empresa eh, bueno, pues simplemente cuando terminemos de equiparnos le voy a ceder la palabra eh, espero que ese perfil mixto del que hablaba haga que sea capaz de hablarnos eh, con, desde el interior pero sin intentar vendernos nada bueno, pues le dejo con el doctor Coyle Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your warm introduction, I guess. Hello, everybody can understand me? Uh, I'm going to speak in English, and I know it's not your native language, it's not your normal language. Well, the same comes for me. I'm speaking normally Dutch, so I try to speak really slowly. But if you say, I don't have a single clue where he's talking about, please raise your hands. So if you think I don't understand it, I'm lost. Please raise your hand and I ask Ricardo to translate everything what I say in Spanish. Thank you. Oh my uh, dear friend. Um, I give a completely different talk than the previous teachers because I present myself here now as a businessman with a lot of knowledge on IR. So I don't present formulas, I don't present hypotheses, I don't present proofs. I just present my view on the business and IR thing. Well, almost uh, 16, 18 years ago, and 18 kilos less, <laughs> I was doing my thesis on axiomatic theory for information retrieval, and I wrote a lot of formulas in my thesis on the proof. How can you? How can you? Uh, uh, describe relevance. What is relevance? What kind of thing is relevance that we can build systems to, to make an IR system? And in the early stage there was not Yahoo yet, you know, a little bit, but there was no Google yet, and I was doing my research. Almost 18 years later, I call myself a strategic consultant to media and wear complete different kind of clothes, you know, say ties and suits. And I was thinking about the idea that it's very easy if you want to go to business after your uh, school, after your masters, there's really a world out there. Because managers are easy, they like to have reports. But soon you climb up the hierarchy and you find out that directors like PowerPoints. And if you go to the executive board, what do they like? Any idea? They like cartoons. <laughs> and with cartoons, you try to make things explicit. So, in my talk today, I use a lot of cartoons to make you things clear. And yes, when opportunity came knocking, I could hear it because I was listening to my success tapes. It's about. Well, when I finished my thesis in 1996, I was thinking, okay, I'm going to consult people on IR. I know a lot. And I'm a researcher. I try to consult. Anybody in the audience has some experience with consulting? A free time, Ricardo? Anybody ever try to explain a company where what's your research about? Anybody helping <coughs> in your spare time to help a company with IR problems? Not yet? Huh? Listen. Because consulting is very easy. As long as you can't solve the problem, just keep on talking about the problem, because then you earn money. Just keep on talking about the problem and let him explain. 
But it's quite hard. It's quite hard to consult about IR. Because in the beginning of my career, I started talking about IT people. And I tried to explain what the beauty was of IR. It's quite hard. Because they say, we got databases. And I say, no, it's about unstructured text. We talked about libraries. And I explained them, you can't search in books by systems. And they say, no, it's not possible. Because we need uh, metadata, we need ontology. And I say, no, you can't do it by systems. They won't listen. And suddenly, it was 2000, one Dutch magazine interviewed, well, and they got all the problem. But suddenly, it was 2000, a magazine in the Netherlands uh, interviewed me, and they asked me an opinion about Google. Google was just a star then, and they called me in this magazine, Professor Google. Professor Google, I've never been paid by Google or did research with Google, but they called me suddenly as consultant, Professor Google. <coughs> so that was really the break case. Because Theo Harvest, and I got lost in a new, a new talk, they present me as Professor Google. <laughs> so no worries about that. It's not honest. But suddenly I entered the, the nice bars, and I suddenly I entered the nice executive boards, and I can give talks with cartoons. Yes, and I will use Google before asking dumb questions. I will use Google before asking dumb questions. And that's the funny thing. After Google, we don't have to explain anymore what IR is about. You just say, well, I'm doing something with like Yahoo or like Google. They all know. So there's really area to consult. I build up my story. It's quite hard because normally I give academic talks. And sometimes I give business talks and I try to merge things here. So what I want to do is to explain why it suddenly is so important that there are people like you in the audience go outside and explain business, what we're dealing with, and what our research is about. Then I want to talk a little bit short because a lot of uh, people before me talked about it, what is the web and IR business about. Then I talk about publishers, the intermediaries that dealing with IR problems and they really see Yahoo and Google as, as uh, enemies. The most important, as I think, is the business and the IR. What we can we do with the beautiful tools of IR in the business? And explain a lot of research questions where we still have to solve the unsolved areas. And if you have any question, now or at the end of the talk, don't hesitate to ask me, but if you say I'm not feeling comfortable in English, just ask him in Spanish anytime. He or he will translate it to me and I try to give an answer back. So if you have any question, please ask it in Spanish and we translate it. Yeah, you got it? Let's start. Just a small introduction. The world is flat and has a long tail. Did anybody read the book The World is Flat? Nobody? It's a good book if you are in this business. Because then you know where our research is about. Because in the business you've got a lot of famous chief executive officers, a lot of famous directors. They're working for Shell. You know Shell, the oil company? It's uh, a Dutchman. They're working for publishers like Wolf Skluwer. This is Nancy McKinstry. They're working for uh, Scotland, uh, Bank of Scotland, or for uh, Reed Elsevier. And they're all dealing with information and questions and libraries and databases and documentation. They're all dealing with this kind of problems. <laughs> but they don't have a single clue about this world, the world of Steve Jobs. Recognize him, Bill Gates, Audi from Ask.com, Zenstrom from Skype, or the guys from Google. And this world is completely disconnected, in my opinion. They don't have a single clue that their business, uh, the, the, the world of the technology, has a large impact on their business. They don't follow it, they don't see it, and they don't understand it. 
and there is we need some people behind it to, to make this world connected. And in my opinion, and that's why I say yes to this kind of talks, we are, you are, the next generation that will solve or help this problem. We really need that. Because look at them. They have just a single clue what's Yahoo about. I once gave a presentation for a large publisher, and one of the directors, really two years ago, asked me, Theo, can you explain Google? I heard so many stories about it. What is that for a company? Can we buy it? That's the idea of publisher's world. And I have to wake them up. And I'm going to explain you in just five minutes uh, what my wake-up call is about. I tell them a little story. As I introduced in, uh, in the beginning, I mentioned they like stories. They don't like paperwork. They don't like reports. They don't like technical reports. They like stories. And I tell them a story. You know who this guy is? He's Spanish. Come on. Columbus. 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 Yeah. He's Spanish. <laughs> oh, we're from the Dutch Gulf. He was Spanish. He's Spanish. Okay. Oh, sorry for that. I thought Columbus was Spanish. At other countries, I always say the Spanish guy. So, what did he do? What did he do for for quite interesting thing? Why is he famous? Why is Columbus famous? Thank you. He sailing. He was the first one to sail into America and came back. And it was quite important, because from that time on, you can sail to America and come back, and people and products are moving from America to Europe, or from Europe to America, just by boat. And the interesting thing is, if you are in the shipyard industry, or if you have a, a boat, a large boat, you really earn money. Because the only way to go to America is by boat. There are no other ways to go to America than by boat. So what happens, Dutch people, like the Holland American line, set up an industry. And if you win in this industry, every year you grow 15% of rate. More interest, more money. Year after year, because the only thing you can go to America was by boat. Then suddenly, you know who this guy is? Lindbergh. Yeah, Lindbergh. He's an American. He flew over in 1927 from New York Island to Paris. And those people in the shipyard industry say, ha ha, what a crap. Nobody will go by plane to America. It's too dangerous. It's scary. It's riskful. It's uncomfortable. You don't know how to, you never know where you end. But within five years, more people move by plane than by ships to America. And within five years, all those shipyard industry has to refocus their business. Some people became luxury boats, but they got a small uh, revenue. They went uh, to cruise ships, only for elderly and rich people. Other people simply get bankrupt, and they put the money out on the street, and they need uh, to bear. Other people, again the Dutch, just sell the boats. I put all the money and became an investment bank. But within five years, the shipyard industry was completely different. But there was a lot of confusion in this five years in this industry. Knock, knock, knock. Five years, what a surprise. Today, we talk about the information age, information years. I mean, it's not going that fast. This is a picture from 1922. They already entered some computers. But in the information age, everything is going really, really fast. I show you five Lindberghs nowadays. You know him? Steve Jobs. Who from you has an iPod or an MPD player? Who got an iPod? Come on, some young people got an iPod. On the back. Got an iPod? No? E pod? E pod? 
It's just for those. This is an iPod, iPod. It's just five years ago. Nobody got an iPod. Five years ago, nobody had music on digital to carry. Just a few of them. Five years ago, we all having this one or the CDs. And it's a large impact for the complete music industry. Because Madonna, you know Madonna? Five years ago, Madonna sell a CD and she earned a lot of money because everybody bought the CD for just one number. Nowadays, young people just download one number and you'll be really lucky if they pay. So what happens? What is the difference between Madonna now and five years ago? Ever been to a Madonna concert? Somebody? Go to a concert of Madonna? Nobody? To a concert of any international artist? Bowie? Madonna? You pay nowadays 100 euro for tickets, concert tickets. Ten years ago it was 10 euro. They just had need another business model. And a lot of artists have disappeared. Here's some Dilbert joke. Your last job was an international pop star. Right. Hey, I recognize you. I bought your new CD. No, you didn't. When I say I bought, I mean downloaded. Exactly. I didn't sell one CD. Everyone downloaded. And he's jobless. Five years. Two. You know him? Niklas Zenstrom? You know Skype? Yeah. Who's using Skype or internet phone? Some people phoning with friends on the internet? There's some translation going there. Yes? MSN. MSN. You used MSN five years ago? Almost five, six years. Because in five years ago there was no Skype or internet phoning. And in the Netherlands, our telecom industry completely changed. They almost got bankrupt and now they're back. But it's the same for Telefonica. It's the same for KPN. It's the same for BT. It's the same for Vodafone. In five years, the complete business model has changed due to the impact of technology. Three, last one. Just ten years ago, the first digital camera get introduced. You are all young people. Do you know? Rec do you recognize this one? You know what it is? Five years ago, everybody made photos with this kind of things. Just five years ago, and in my town, I'm I'm from a poor family. <coughs> When we got pictures in the summer, and we not finished yet with 12 pictures, we have to wait till Christmas, and then we make the other three one. And if you're lucky, in February, you got the whole pictures of the last year. And now every mobile has its own photograph machine, digital. It's a large impact for them, because they all get bankrupt, the whole industry, or changed. That's my story to the publishers and the directors and the managers, board managers. And then I ask them, do you now recognize my Limburg? I'm sorry, Ricardo. Those two guys just began 10 years ago. In 1989, they wrote a white paper on Google. And within five years, the whole publisher value chain has disappeared. What is a value chain? Normally, in the old days, you get an author. They send an article, an idea, an impression, an essay, a book to a publisher. It took three months. He sent it to a reviewer. It took one year. He sent it back to the publisher, and perhaps another time, or another one, another one. Then they send it to an agent, and then they send it to a firm, a company, a library, and then Finally, the reader got it. And typically, it was a process of two, three years. That was the business of the publishers. And they earn every year 
15% of interest or profit. Every year they grow and grow and grow. And then suddenly Google came and made it very easy. So in five years, the world of these directors completely changed. There's a strong belief that search engines find everything and that's reliable information. Well, we're just at the start of this new age and the publishers are still thinking about what to do with the business model. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a funny one because this didn't really happen because we all thought about a lot of people thought about well we don't we don't uh, sympathy with the search engines we got a problem with digitalization and I guess in this area of documentation we all had a discussion about paperless office it didn't succeed we talked about the e-books is still waiting but this is not happening. The happening of search technology is what the publishers should think about. And nowadays, some new guys try to be a real Lindbergh. They say every so often an underestimated contender rises up to compete with the champion play for play or even beat the champ. Sometimes like that is happening in the search business. So every time a new player comes up and say, go away Yahoo, go away Google, go away Microsoft, this is my business. But this is quite hard business. Because five years, what will these people be about five years? What will happen with YouTube in about five years? It's the largest broadcast in the world? Or it's just so follow up by a new player? What about Yahoo in five years? <coughs> What about Apple? What about Skype? What about Hives? You get Hives in Spain? Hives? Social network? It's quite popular in the Netherlands. Where every student is on Hives and connected with friends and share ideas and homework. More than Facebook and MySpace. Yeah, it's like Facebook, yeah. More like. And MySpace. But it's more popular than that? Yeah. It's got 5 million in the Netherlands. So it's very hard for us and for companies to detect the limber models. Let me ask you, please raise your hand, yes or no. You believe in five years the e-book will be changing the world? A digital book will change the world in five years? Yes or no? No. Fingers. Who say yes? Fingers. Is e-books, the digital book, is going to be changing the world in five years? Who say yes? Nobody? Nobody? I say. <laughs> I say. Because suddenly I see around the world, everywhere, trying people, business, try to do with e-books. And I even got in my department at university, what if a teacher has an e-book? And now there's lying there a lot of paperwork. What if simply you got an USB and everybody has his own e-book, a digital book? It will change the world for libraries. Because what? You're going to put in the, in the shelves then. You're going to put ebooks in the shelves? No, I guess not. What about documentation then? Because you easily can put documentation on an ebook. So perhaps ebooks will be a limber. I put my money on it. What about digital television? You can carry everywhere on the beach. Everywhere is television around. Who's believing that? Is that a limber? Ricardo? Young people, you believe in television everywhere? Papers on mobile, it was really an idea of the last years. Who's using Alpais? Alpais? Apple. Alpais. Alpais. On mobile, anybody reading Alpais on mobile in five years? Yes. What about the fridge? You know the fridge? Yeah. And there's an idea that you can just enter the computer your shoppings and then they bring uh, automatically your new shoppings. 
Now, what you want to cook is what's in the fridge. It will change the world of groceries and uh, or, uh, warehouses. And the last one, the the, the one hundred dollar laptop. Every child a laptop. Will be. Who's believe that in five years every child in the world has a laptop? Every child in the world has a laptop. If it happens, and that's my story, it will be a great case. Because suddenly then the whole world is connected from child to home. My thing is, my story is, and I start just after this, my story is there's not one Lindbergh coming over at this moment. There are thousands of Lindbergh coming over. And every manager, every director, every company has to decide, is this a threat or is this a chance? And a lot of these stories are information retrieval in words, and we can make the difference. So that's my story about it. And I see a lot of Lindbergh, like Yahoo, like Google, making change, change the world, and nobody got an idea. Because the impact of this big four has an impact for the publishers because they change the business model. Has an impact for the media companies because nobody's watching television anymore, they're watching YouTube, at least in the Netherlands. For the IT companies, because they have to change their IT equipments. For the banks and the financial institutes, for the FBI, for people working with information, for the, uh, <coughs> the, the companies that sell products like soap and uh, food, and Coca-Cola, for sportwear, and for travel agency. So IR is changing their world, and they don't have a single clue yet. And then the world is flat. Then. If you want to go in business, please buy these books, because they are the way companies think about this world. The world is flat is about, I'm giving now a talk in Spain. But previous, just 10 years ago, only people in the Netherlands know me. And if I'm lucky, I get an article published in a, in a journal, and then I get famous. But for all of you, you can start tomorrow to uh, write an article that can be read by a Chinese. You can just easily reach the Chinese people now, or reach the Brazilian ones. So the world is flat. So IR makes also the world international accessible. And buy this book, because it's about how Google and its rivals rewrote the rules of business and transformed our culture. That's what we're about. Okay, so that was my story why it's important. Now I want to talk about what is that thing that we advise about. And we got three things. We can talk about the world of Yahoo, Google and searching the web. This is this part. I think information retrieval is the killer application on the World Wide Web. We all use Yahoo, Google, or uh, Microsoft, or perhaps Baidu, the Chinese search engine. It changed the world of advertisements, and it changed the world of economics. But I believe also that information retrieval was. We got a little bit over now. I don't say the business of Yahoo and Google is over, but we need the next stage. And I don't know if you know the words on web. How do you call it in Spanish? 1.0 or 1.0 or 1.0? Okay. Okay. First of all, we start with network. Then we created a social network. And we're all now waiting for an intelligent network. And the idea of uh, uh, Web 3.0 is information retrieval 
will be finding information domain-specific, context-limited, user-experience-friendly, meaning-aware, document synthesis retrieval. It's all about, it, it, it doesn't really have a lot of extras. You need reasoning, you need intelligence. And we miss the intelligence. And I'm going to explain you why. And there's a lot of research on intelligence. You know anything about research on intelligence? It's about smart robots. My department in the Netherlands, uh, University of Twente, is doing research on small robots. They try to make robots as smart as a human. And to build robots smarter and smarter, so they can interact. They can be social, they can be working together. And I give you an ex uh, I show you a movie. It's on our Dutch soccer team. My department is having every year an international soccer game on robot agents. You know that? And they're very smart because there's nobody with a joystick, there's nothing not happening. They're all alone and they got their own small intelligence. And in the early days of soccer, they all go for the ball. And they all run for the ball and try to, uh, to make the goals, like the young people on the, uh, on the football field. But they become smarter and smarter. And every time we define it something new, like we got a goalkeeper, he's staying there. And we got a really aggressive Barcelona guy, you see? <laughs> But they become intelligent and intelligent. We've got one who's coming for the goal, one to keep free. And we try to build some social intelligence in the systems. And I show you a really nice goal. Now he's coming. Wait, 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 wait to see. And it's nothing new, but this is intelligent research. And I strongly believe that we get that, this one on the web. We already got some intelligent agents. Uh, we got a, a, a Dutch company that did something with an all, every uh, retrieval one, uh, every agent has some smart retrieval engine. And one of them is looking for all the documents. And the other one is looking for only the relevant documents. And they trade, and they come to a good decision, which one is relevant or not. But perhaps that will be the next one. But my opinion, we're talking about business and IR. If you feel the luck and you say, okay, I know a lot about IR and I'm going to build my new system. As a consultant, I say, don't even try. It's a metaphor, a story about, you know how you can measure height or you can measure the height of a building with a barometer. You know barometer? You got the same thing in Spain, yeah, barometer. And it's an old puzzle. And you can, some people say, okay, I go up the building, throw it down, and measure the seconds it fell to fall down. Or I'm going to bargain together with the, the guy who, um, the architect of the, uh, of, the, of the building, and I ask him if he wants to say the height if he gets the barometer. We got a more similar story, it's on the, on the internet, on if you've got a laptop and a lot of IR knowledge, how you can make money on the, on the internet. The question to you, if you've got a laptop and a lot of IR knowledge, how to make money on the internet? Just sell the laptop and buy some buy new stocks. <laughs> Because there are a lot of large companies like Yahoo and Google, and I saw it before this morning. There are a lot of competitors. So that's not the world of, of business and IR. Don't go there. Perhaps go to the intermediaries. What are the intermediaries? There are people that in the old fashioned days, and perhaps the group of documentation are in the same position. They have information, there are people 
and they have relevant information, and then you've got the customer, the library, but also the travel agency. I want to go to Spain, and then you go to an office, and they're looking in books, and they tell you, well, Madrid is beautiful, I've been there, yes, they never been there, but they always tell you, I've been there. Insurance companies, I want to have an insurance, a lot of information, and they say, you have to do this one, not because it's the best one, but it's the best one for them. Music stores, or publishers, and they all displaced, changed their model by putting an information retrieval system in it. So a lot of people are trying to make a business on the internet by just changing the old business models. Because we know for sure that insurance companies, travel agents, music stores, publishers, they have now a lot of profit, but they will end somewhere. And the question is when. It's not if, but the question is when. That music shops just go digital. Who's you all having a study on documentation, don't you? Or library? Yeah? Yeah? You all got study on documentation. <laughs> it's also the question, what can you do with the knowledge about information, storage, and retrieval? And do you see it as an enemy or as a friend? It's at least, above all, a publisher problem. How to create best servers online. And I, I have, each year, for the last five years, I do a research in the Dutch, for the Dutch publishers, and I ask them, what are you doing now with IR, information retrieval, or what are you going to do in the next two years with information retrieval? And I ask them year after year. And this is one of the results of my own research. Within two years, 42% of the Dutch publishers wants to offer the customer personalized information. This implies a growth of 20%. And personalized information is dealing with information retrieval. Another one. Within two years, 76% uh, of the Dutch publishers wants to offer the customer a search engine. This implies growth. So they all having ideas and thinking about, but they don't know where to ask. One problem. They're talking about it for the last three years. And why? Because nobody is guiding them. And they all, there, is, there are almost no business consultants that have an idea on information retrieval. And that's quite a problem. Because publishers have uh, education books. You can do a lot of education and retrieval. You can search on, on books, on tasks, on, on, on topics. But this, please no, tell me if you know a publisher that's really good in information retrieval on the educational side. We've got literature. You can do a lot of search engines. And all those bees are zooming around, but they're not changing the world. It's a little bit catch-22, because a lot of purposes really thought we're going to buy Google, we're going to buy Yahoo. And they look at each other and they wait and they wait. And they wait and they wait. And they wait for another reason. You know why they wait for another reason? The dot-com crisis. You got it in Madrid as well? The internet, the e-hype business. Where everybody thought we got e-business, it collapsed, and we never try it again. So in the Netherlands, eight years after the e-business crisis, we're still waiting. We've got this, and we all know that we're going to do a lot of good things with IR and systems, but they're still scared what happens five years ago. And they all wait. And they wait so long that Google and Yahoo and all the other people just take over their business. 
like travel agency wait. So that's the world of web. But and it is the most important thing I strongly believe in is this in business and IR. You ain't seen nothing yet. And that's the part where I do the most consultants in. Business problems are not an accident, they are a result of poor and efficient work practices. And a lot of uh, there are a lot of business problems in companies. You know what a company is? Company and information? All those blue balls are information. And what all those typically consultants try to do is talk about enterprise uh, ER ERP. You know that? Workflow management. They try to make this a better world and they think about perhaps we focus on this process and we build a computer system for this or we try to build on this process and all this information turning around in this company. And my statement with IR is forget about structure, deal with chaos. Just deal with information is a lot. You can't structure it, you can't describe everything, you can't put metadata on everything. Just deal with the chaos. And there are a lot of business problems where there are really good IR solutions for it. And I put a company, my own company, I, I created this teaser. There are just four people from the PhD on IR who build systems just to address and attack business problems. You can see it on teaser.com. For instance, Thijs Westerveld is working there. One of them is, for instance, for the uh, public library. It's just a small comp library. And they got a, a lot of information about World War II for children. And they offered a search engine for the web for children. So a child goes to the internet and searches all about Hitler. But if you go to the internet and search all about Hitler, you get an also false information that Hitler wasn't that bad. Hitler didn't know about the Kristallnacht program. And you want to say, you want to spare your children for that kind of information. So what they create was on the library of the Dutch Library for Children, we put vertical search. And vertical search is nothing more than you only search in specific content. And you only address specific content and you call that content and you address it. And a lot of information that is good for children on uh, World War II. For instance, uh, Anna Frank, you know that? Yeah. That's, that's a uh, sticking uh, environment who uh, saves all kinds of information interesting for children. So we built a vertical search. Another one, Einstein, the expert finding. You know about expert finding? Expert finding is a whole new area in information retrieval. If you look for a guy, if you look for information, perhaps you don't look for the book, you look for the person who knows all about this information. And the first time I saw it was on a, in, a, in a demo at the University of Glasgow, and you search for uh, a subject, and you don't get documents, you get people back. And I saw it almost five years ago and said, wow, this, will be, this is interesting for companies. If you search for a subject, you don't get documents, but you get people back. So you get, if someone, uh, I need someone help, is there anybody out there? You got documents, a list of people with relevant knowledge. This is just an IR solution. It's now more or less uh, a solved problem. This is a copy of my uh, directory in my own, for my own laptop. I, well, it's all about documents. You can see what kind of expert I am. You see media, uh, mobile internet, McKinsey Codler, really check media, internet spent, uh, European media. So all these documents give kind of impression what I'm, what my interest is about. So if somebody is looking for media on the internet, perhaps they have to find me. 
although I don't write, or I don't write that much on media, but I'm an expert because I've got a lot of information. And we brought it to companies, to consultant, consulting companies like Accenture, I saw it uh, entering Madrid, or KPMG, I worked for seven years, or PricewaterhouseCoopers. They got 100,000 of consultants, and they need every time, I need an expert on oil, I need an expert on uh, computers or on security. And what we try to do is to make their business case. Like you've got a problem, who has seen this problem before? We have to, we know, uh, we have to define an approach, how are we going to solve the problem? Who has done it before? We have to write a proposal. Who can review my proposal if the uh, proposal is realistic? We have to demonstrate who has worked on this problem in history. We need the staff who has the skills to perform this work. Who has similarities and analogies. And at last, who has, been, who has seen solutions and failed? They're all questions like who and not give me the report or give me the documentation. You need to, to search for a person. So we take this problem and we build simply an expert finder for a consulting company. And all those problems we define in the business case. And then you get, you need the company talk. Companies only want to know, do I get money out of it? So we say, okay, if you have an expert finder, then you have better account management. Then you have more proposals the quality of your proposal will be increased. So you sell more hours. Your cost will be lower because you get less budget overruns. You get less sales time. You get less training in your eyes. So the cost will be down. So revenues goes up, cost will go down, profits will go up. So please introduce the expert finder. And it's just a simple IR solution. It's in the academic world here for five years. And nobody in the business think about it or talked about it. Here's an example. You can find it on the internet. We bought, we built it for uh, as a demo for my academic institute. You search for robot, and then you find Anton Nijholt, my professor, my colleague, as the most uh, well-known guy. Not because he is uh, he is put his uh, CV somewhere, but because all these articles are. Uh, indexed and put his name out and waged and ranked and indexed again and page ranked and all those IR stuff and until Nile become his most expert from this business, from this uh, group. You can see where the experts live in the Netherlands. You can click on him and see where, it, where is he available or not. You can see all his articles if you want, you do the simple IR thing. And this is just a simple solution. On you got business problems, you got on the IR world all kinds of topics, and they don't use it. I just surprised every year they don't use it. Another example: opinion mining. You know opinion opinion mining in the IR? Opinion is what's the Spanish word for opinion? Okay, that's that's easy. It's originally uh, from this example, Dell. Dell is a uh, company, it uh, put some Spanish so now you can understand it. And suddenly there was uh, a bad, uh, uh, there was a discussion on the quality of Dell. And Dell was crap. And the walls suddenly all rise up, block sides, Dell hell, and there was a discussion. And all, a lot of marketers were following this discussion, read blogs and had a discussion, how can we attack this and why didn't we see it before, etc, etc. On IR you got uh, this simple question, is it possible to follow the opinions about Dell? You think? On the internet? Can you follow the opinion about Dell on the internet? Yes, you can. Just by simply make a word list or an index list on positive elements on the text and negative elements on the text. And just rate them, rank them and calculate. And it's the world of opinion mining. It's for five years now 
very popular research area in IR. So it's easy done. It's the newspaper of today. No so slow is pain. Can you say this is article? Is it positive or negative sentiment? Is it positive or negative? Both. Both. Is it left or right? Both? Is it uh, grumpy or is it uh, a positive sentiment? Is it opinion or is it fact based? I ask you these questions because is it, follow, follow, is it possible to follow the sentiment of help? There was a question I got from the Dutch newspapers. Because a lot of newspapers in the Netherlands get some discussion that they were too left sided or too right sided. And some newspapers say the argument you'll always uh, be very negative about everything. So we built from this problem just an opinion mining for newspapers. And yes, we can. It's simply, or simply, with IR tools, it's simply. We got opinion mining, you just use, add some extra list for uh, Dutch newspapers. Or smileys, when a smile, a lot of smileys, positive smileys, you know it's a positive block, when there are negative smileys, you know it's negative. And it's solved in IR, a lot of work done in IR. And what you got is like this, you search for latitude, battery, latitude, and then you see, okay, 68% is positive of this block, and 32% is negative. And here you see the details where what the positive evidence words are the negative evidence. And like the previous talk, you can add here a learning algorithm, or you can build a machine learning. So the system is getting better and better. And what we did is a lot of things, funny things, like the positive opinion of a newspaper during the months. <laughs> you can compare newspapers. The, our price is uh, not left-winged but the other ones are. So you can build very interesting things. And a lot of marketeers are very interested in this kind of tools. So business and IR, you ain't seen nothing yet. There's a lot of things to do, like vertical search, expert finding, opinion mining, and a lot of search solutions, very interested for the companies. Some research questions. Because you ain't seen nothing yet, I guess. There are some new topics coming up now. Very interesting for the business people, like sentiment. Yeah. Ricardo, I did this one to you. This is Spanish? No, it's the English. If you search for beer, what kind of information do you get then? All kinds. But does it differ between if it's raining outside or if the sun is shining? You think? Good, Yahoo has a different answer when it rains or when the sun shines? Not yet. <laughs> I did some research for uh, Overture before, an uh, advertisement company. Is there any reaction on the system whether the weather is sunshine or not? Or this is the beach, but this is the beach in the Netherlands. <laughs> <laughs> or, what's happening tonight? Soccer game. How, which soccer game is tonight? The Roma Real. Those guys are coming. <laughs> <laughs> if you search for beer then, this evening, perhaps in an interview, you want to have a different answer than before. What can do be done with sentiment and search? It's a new area because a lot of research never. IR people never thought about this kind of things. And it's a little bit social and IR. So there are all kinds of searches. Blogging. Blogging and search is di different. Blogging and search is difficult. And a lot of companies talked about uh, having weeklies and having blogs. But you need a different kind of search solutions for that. And I'm trying to explain to those publishers that this is a new kind of search. 
Why? You don't want to have only the relevant, perhaps you want to follow the block history. And you want the top one above. There's a new area on European funding based on, on meetings. In my university in Twente, we do a lot of uh, helping meetings to uh, an all kind of ways. Why? This guy is talking, this girl is talking to this girl with a strange uh, avatar, but and she's talking, and automatically make notes and notes who is agreeing and who is disagreeing. But if we have all these kind of meetings nowadays uh, in five years, automatically with agreements and disagreements, can we search for meetings rather than make notes? And just by introducing all kind of new technology. Every meeting will be on the web, so you can search the last board meeting of World Spluer. We're quite far in that. You know, in motion scanning, we also do it in my university. I'm not doing that by my people. We look at, uh, at faces and have an in uh, index on if he's angry or happy or surprised. So you can use it in different kind of way on IR, on information view. Like, if somebody is looking at a document and is angry, it's a kind of indication that perhaps it's not relevant. If he looks happy and he smiles, then perhaps he thinks it's relevant. So perhaps you can have a kind of face interaction rather than put all kind of clicks, say yes, no. And this is coming up really, really soon. because. Google already talked about putting a webcam on your face and have kind of face interaction or sound interaction, like mumbling, yes, yes, this is good. It's a discussion if you can do it. And also in the Netherlands, the discussion if you want to have it as a user, that Google or Yahoo watch you every day. Perhaps you don't. We did it on the Mona Lisa. And Mona Lisa was for 50% happy and for 50% not happy. This is quite hard. But what we really need is research on and research with um, on the context, context knowledge. You want to talk about it tomorrow, this evening? No. Not tomorrow. No. Not this evening. <coughs> context. We need the knowledge of the customer. Do we have any idea who is our client? We need to have knowledge of the business problem. What is the business problem we can solve? And we can solve a lot with IR. Like, <coughs> if you get a, people in professional or an old guy looking for newspapers or the bank people or religious people looking for that, they are different kind of people with different kind of problems, with different kind of domains. And we all use them as the same nowadays. We only always put the same system in it. And I guess new research coming out and we need a lot of extra research to solve this kind of specific business problems. And that's where I'm thinking and thinking about and earning money with. Just making this kind of small problems like elderly people reading newspapers. They have a different kind of relevance and they need a different kind of search tools. What we really need is information retrieval knowledge. Like we helping people from universities to, 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 uh, to create positions to people like and have some IR knowledge. But they really uh, uh, have need some knowledge about classical IR. Because a lot of people in the industry think about IR, uh, information retrieval as databases. You need about context information retrieval, like first the search. You need to know all these concepts presented this day and yesterday. We need some have some uh, knowledge about user profiles, how to build that. XML retrieval, because it's a new area in the publishing world. Question answering, and many, many more. I know not much people know about this, only you. I hope.
But also on the other side, I would say the Ricardo side, the business game, by economic knowledge of the business models. Ricardo gave a lecture in CDR for the first time on, on all kinds of things, all on web advertisement. It's a whole new economic area on how much you're going to pay for a keyword. In the Netherlands, we've got a Dutch uh, newspaper called The Telegraph. And the word Telegraph is too expensive for them to buy. And their competitors can buy the word Telegraph. So everybody's looking for Google or Yahoo for Telegraph, they go to the competitor. So there's a whole new economic area of counting words and what you pay for words and what you're ready to pay for. And all those normal advertisement guys coming from the marketing industry, they don't have an idea on IR and relevance. They just simply think about banners and think about uh, advertisement like on television. But they don't know the economics of web advertisements. <coughs> So we really need a lot of knowledge people in this area, but they're not yet to come. And it's quite hard, especially with my talk about five years on Limburg, what will bring the future. This is one of the futures idea. Google search, your brain, your home, your family, your friends, your ex-friends, your relatives, the co-workers. Satellite photos of people you want to spy on, satellite photos of people spying on you, medical records, credit records, tax reports, phone records, court documents, other people's conversations. Well, perhaps this won't be the future. But for one thing I know for sure, and perhaps because I'm a part-time professor in this area, I know the future will be information driven. To end with, I think we've got some issues left because there's a lack of knowledge of IR all around in business people, economic, marketing, sales, uh, documentation. We really need to have a discussion on the business case. How are we going to earn money with it? Because the world is changing that fast, we don't know if we get money with web advertisement in two years. And we deal with the e-business memory that to say it's possible that you can do all of this, but five years ago you also had the same story. And we really need proven technology on opinion mining, on expert finding, on vertical search. The last five, ten minutes are for any questions in the audience. Other questions? You translate it. Okay, um, thank you very much. Uh, Systems, uh, search for problems, 
do as what you want to do as a documentation or a library specialist. Second, you can go to a company like Accenture and say, I know a lot about documentation, information world, and I'm going to be uh, the one that can help you in this whole area I presented. So go to the company with the problem or go to the IT company. The third one, and I really, really advise you this one, as an entrepreneur one, is start your own company and think about changing the world from yourself because there's nothing more fun in the world than starting your own company and just advise people that you really think rather than the big one things. I'm just going to uh, make a little joke. I saw before that uh, the computer you were showing, the 100 uh, euro yeah. computer, it was with Windows, Microsoft Windows. Yeah. Uh, considering that Windows is something like 80 euros, that makes a 20 euros computer. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I hope Microsoft will get to do a lot of good, work, uh, good for the world, so perhaps it gives for me. With your research engineer, I'm dealing with it. Okay, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much.